the past is ruining so many people's lives and robbing them of their futures. So it's time to get back to God's plan for our lives. The moment we believe in Jesus, we get a whole new life, a fresh start. But how do you lay hold of that fresh start? How do you start to live that new life? Hi, I'm Bernie Diamond. Welcome again to Christianity Works as we head into the third message in this four-part series that I've called Meet the New Me. Because that's the whole point of giving our lives to Jesus Christ. The whole point is that God wants to give us a new life, a fresh new start to live in the freedom that Jesus came to bring us, to be all who God made us to be, to be his image bearers in this world, to live for his glory, and to make a powerful difference in this world. That's what this is all about. People talk about theology as though it's a theory lesson. Let me tell you, Jesus coming to this earth and dying for the likes of you and me, that was no theory lesson. That was gritty, powerful reality of God wanting to deal with the central malady of the human condition, that thing that he calls sin, that thing that we go, whoa, 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 whoa. don't want to talk about sin. Sin is such an old-fashioned, judgmental word. Uh, Can't you find another word? The reason Jesus came to this earth was to die to pay the price of your sin and mine. Because be certain about this. A day of judgment is coming. There will be a day when you and I stand before God and we have to give an account of our lives. Me, my life wasn't perfect. It still isn't. But I'll be able to stand before God and say, Lord, I am here because I put my faith and my trust in Jesus. All my sins will be forgiven, and I have the gift of eternal life. What about you? Have you put all your trust, all your eggs in one basket? Have you put all your trust in this Jesus who came to die for you? Because he wants to give you a new life. Let's just recap over these last few weeks. We began with a powerful reality in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27 that you and I have been created in the very image of God, the Imago Dei. Let's look at it. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So you and I have been created in the very image of God. That's what makes you so valuable. You may not feel valuable. You may look around at all the other clever, successful, beautiful people that you're surrounded by and think, well, I'm not much. But actually you are. Because you have been created in the image of God. You've sinned, yes, so have I. And that sin mars that image. It's like people painting spray can graffiti all over the image of God in us. A powerful part of God's plan through Jesus Christ is to restore you back into his original image. Let's go and have a look. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So God knew you before time began. He destined you to be one of his children so that you could be conformed to his son's image. Now, as I explained the other week on the program, that word conformed doesn't mean be put in a straitjacket. It comes from the Greek word "somorphos," from where we get morphing, metamorphosis, transformed. God's plan was for you to be transformed back into the image of God, back into Jesus' image. God's plan for you is for him to deal with the sin in your life so that more and more every day, day by day by day, you end up looking more and more like Jesus. God's plan is to deal with the sin in your life. Hey, that's great news. You and I are not worthy. My sense of unworthiness kept me from God for 20 years. 
I can't go back to God. You know, what will he say? What will he think with all I've done? The whole point is that we're not worthy. That's what grace is all about. That's what mercy is all about. Mercy is God withholding the punishment for us, from us that we deserve because he put it on Jesus, his son. Grace is God blessing us with things that we don't deserve. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of grace. And by his mercy and his grace, his plan is to transform us back into his image, to clean up the mess in our lives. That's the good news. And I pray that that's some good news that you'll take in your heart. Your job is not to clean up your act. Your job is to focus on Jesus and he will help you clean up your act. We'll look at that more next week on the program. But let's take a look now, a closer look at God's grace and mercy through Jesus. Come with me please to Romans chapter 6 beginning at verse 3. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. If we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Do not let sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. I love this because this talks about the new me. This series is called Meet the New Me. It's about the new me and the new you. What Paul's saying here under, under the authority of the Holy Spirit is that when we believe in Jesus, sin dies in us. When we're baptized into Christ, it's like we go down with him in death and we rise up again with him in newness of life. And they're exactly the words that the Apostle Paul uses here. Look at verse 4 in Romans chapter 6. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. That's God's plan for you. The point of dealing with your sin by letting Jesus suffer and die was so that you be, could be forgiven. And the point of raising Jesus from the dead was so that not only will Jesus have victory over death, but when you put your faith in him, you too will have victory over death and you will have what? Newness of life. When you put your trust and your faith in Jesus, you're meant to get a fresh start. How many people want a fresh start? How many people want their slate wiped clean? How many people want a new life, a transformed life, a better life, a life that's filled with joy and peace and power? That's what we get through Jesus. A new life. Meet the new me. Meet the new you. That's what this is all about. I want to share with you right now the most beautiful poem. It's called The Touch of the Master's Hand. It kind of explains powerfully for me what we've just been talking about. Have a listen. It was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bidding, good folks, he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar, a dollar, then two? Only two? Two dollars, and who'll make it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three? But no. From the room far back, a grey-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loosened strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as caroling angels sing. The music ceased, and the auctioneer with a voice that was quiet and low said, What am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with his bow. A thousand dollars. And who'll make it two? Two thousand. And who'll make it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice. And going and gone, said he. The people cheered. But some of them cried, we do not quite understand what change it's worth. Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin is auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of potage, a glass of wine, a game, and 
He travels on. He's going once, going twice. He's going and almost gone. But the master comes and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. By the touch of the master's hand. My friend, that's what we're talking about here. We, we see ourselves often as, as that worthless old violin, battered and scarred, and all the mess that's happened to us through life. I'm sure as you look back on your life, you, you can see things that, that knock the edges off you and that left you scarred and, and that left you ashamed and embarrassed and you think, well, well, what can I be worth? And along comes God through Jesus Christ, his son. And he puts his hand on your life. He brings newness of life to your life. He brings back the truth that you are indeed made in the image of God. And when God puts his hand on your life, the tune that comes out through the gifts and abilities that he's given you is something so sweet. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, for you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that he prepared beforehand for you to walk into. The touch of the Master's hand on, on your life today. You have been forgiven, and God is restoring you back into the original image, his image, that you may walk in the newness of life that through you he may play a new tune, that, that in your heart you would sing a new song. The Spirit would flow out through you into the lives of other people. Recognize your worth. Your worth is not what you see in the mirror. It's not what the world tells you. Your worth is that you've been made in the image of God and that through Jesus God came to redeem you and restore you back into that original image. My prayer for you today is that that powerful truth would become the reality of your heart. I'd just like to take a moment to tell you about the latest life application booklet that we've published here at Christianity Works. It's called Your Complete Makeover Awaits. So many people want a new start, a fresh start, a makeover. There are so many makeover shows on television. And yet we go looking in all the wrong places for that new start, that new life. This booklet, Your Complete Makeover Awaits, is about taking what we're discovering here in the Word of God and making it a part of who you are. Your Complete Makeover Awaits. To request your free copy, stop by our website or give us a call. The contact details are on your screen right now. And we'll send a free copy of that booklet straight out to you in the post. Your complete makeover awaits. That was a pretty amazing poem, wasn't it? It was written by Moira Brooks Welsh. Um, you can Google it, The Touch of the Master's Hand, and you'll find it. Uh, to me, it just tells so powerfully the story that, that God has a new life plan for you. That, that, that no matter what the world sees, or no matter what you think of yourself, no matter how you see yourself, this, this powerful truth that you are created in his image and that through Christ he has a new beginning for you. In fact, I'd like to look at that new beginning a lot more. Can you come with me please to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17? This is what it says. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Have you put your trust in Jesus? Do, do you believe that Jesus died and rose again for you? Do you believe that through his death, you're forgiven. And through his resurrection, you have newness of life. Is that, is that you? Because if it is, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, not if the good-looking, the super spiritual, the successful people who are in Christ Jesus, it's not for them, it's for anyone who puts their trust in Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The past is robbing so many people of their present and destroying their futures. The past is irrelevant. You are a new creation. You have a new beginning. 
Your slate is wiped clean. Just as Jesus rose again from the dead, so that same power raises you to a new life. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, right there is a new creation. The old has passed away. The old has no hold over you. The old has no power over you. Whatever abuse you may have suffered, whatever sins you may have committed, whatever bad has happened to you in your past, the old has passed away. It no longer has any power or relevance or hold over you. And behold, the new has come. You know what I think the most important word in that verse is? It's the word behold. God's saying, look. Look at the reality. The reality. Look. Don't see a battered old violin. See the truth. Everything is new. Believe that. Hold on to that. Look at that. And stop looking at the old you. Right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, this is the new you. This is the new me. This is the new start that you and I have in Christ Jesus. And today, God is calling you to behold, to look to see what God has done for you through Jesus. My friend, I just pray that, that this word is being driven into your heart by the Holy Spirit. I pray that God is setting you free from your past right now. I pray that God is helping you to let go of the hurts and the disappointments and the regrets of the past that have been giving you a false image of yourself, that have been giving you the wrong idea of your future. Here's the truth. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, there is a new creation. The old has gone. Behold, everything for you is new. Meet the new you. Look in the mirror and see the new you. You have a choice. You can believe your circumstances. You can believe your past. You can believe the lies that this world tells you about yourself. Or you can believe the word of God. And the word of God for you today is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Let's read it again together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Interestingly, a, a while ago, I was in a car and somebody asked me, you're not one of these born-again Christians, are you? And I smiled and I said to the woman, it's the only sort of Christian there is. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus asked, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again has become a bit of a cringe-worthy label for Christians. Oh, you're not one of those born-again Christians, are you? According to Jesus, a born-again Christian is the only sort of Christian there is. Now, Nicodemus, whom he was talking to, a religious leader, he didn't get that. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can, can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. When, when you and I put our trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit enters us. We're born again. We have a new start. The Holy Spirit does in us what Jesus did for us back on that cross. You have a new life. You have a new start. That's what the Bible says. The question is, will you believe that? Will you live your life as though what God says about you is true? Or are you going to go on living your life believing the lies of the past, believing the lies of the devil, believing the lies of this world? What are you going to do? Choose. Today, choose. Choose to believe 2 Corinthians chapter 5.17 or choose to believe the lies of this world. Please don't leave our time together today saying you weren't told. You have been told. You have the opportunity to believe. And, and you see, when... I share the word of God with you. Nothing I say can make a difference. But there is a power in the word of God to set you free. And when the Holy Spirit takes that word and writes it on your heart, you will be free indeed. That's what Jesus said. When the Son of Man sets you free, you will be free indeed. I believe God is setting some people free from their past today. I believe that God is setting some people free from the hurts, the disappointments, the abuse, the sin, the regrets, the shame of the past. Through the power of his word. Through the power of what Jesus did for you. Don't hang on to the past. Let go. Grab onto this truth. Grab onto what God is saying to you today.
Be set free from the past. Be the new me that God created you to be. That's why God brought us together today. God wants to set you free. I had an email recently from a woman, um, I think she was in the UK, whose husband five years earlier had committed suicide. He'd stabbed himself in the heart. She'd had to bring up the children on her own. Um, she was devastated. She was lost. The children were growing up and leaving. And she came to the conclusion that this was the end of the road for her. She could no longer live. She, she heard me on some radio program talk about, she heard me, sorry, on some radio program talk about the abundant life that Jesus came to give. And, um, and she found that so hard to accept. She found that so hard to internalize. How could my life be abundant with all that's happened to me? So I wrote her a long email and shared her journey, shared my journey with her. Because my journey with Christ began at the point of suicide. My journey with Christ began at the point when I was going to take my own life. I chased after all these wrong images in the world. I chased after success. I chased after wealth. And, and I was well on my way to getting those things. And yet there was a lostness and a devastation and an emptiness because I was so ashamed of my past, so ashamed of the relationships I'd burned, so ashamed of the things that I'd done wrong. And yet in Christ, I discovered that I was a new creation. And this not as a theory lesson, this is a, a reality. I look back on the old Bernie, still the same flesh, still the same gifts and motivations, but that old Bernie feels like a different person to me. I can't imagine going back to being that guy. It's like I used to smoke three packets of cigarettes a day. I can't imagine going back to smoking three packets of cigarettes a day. Because this newness of life that Jesus has brought to me is so wonderful. I would never want to go back. That's what I shared with her. In Christ, the past is irrelevant. You either choose to believe that or not. Sometimes we choose to believe our own circumstances because they're here, we can see them. They're more real than Jesus. But the reason I do what I do, the reason I get out of bed every day, the reason I'm here with you on this television program is that I know that the word of God is the power to change. I know that as I declare to you the word of God, the Holy Spirit is working in your heart and setting you free from your past. Stop living in the past. Stop letting your regrets and hurts and abuses from the past dominate your life. For if anyone is in Christ, right there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything is new. That's for you today. And as God tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we are his workmanship. It's like our battered old violin. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do what? to be auctioned off cheap, to sit on a shelf gathering dust. You and I are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus in order to do the good works that he prepared beforehand for us to do. God has a new song for you to sing. God has a plan for your life. I don't care how old you are. Some people say to me, I'm too old. I'm infirmed. I'm... I want to tell you about Eric. Eric was a friend and supporter of our ministry and, and back in the early 2000s, he was in his mid-90s in a nursing home. Um, his body was sick. And even just a couple of weeks before he, he passed on and, and went home to be with the Lord, he called the office and said, that booklet, I want that booklet. I want to share. There's a woman in the room next to me. She needs to hear the gospel. Send me that booklet. You see, it didn't hold him back. He was sharing the good news of Jesus Christ until the day that he died. I don't know what your circumstances are. I don't know what your life looks like. I, I just don't know. But God does. And God plans for you to walk in the good works that he prepared beforehand for you to do. Just over the next rise, just around the next corner, is the next good thing that God has for you. Father, I pray for anyone who is struggling today to let go of the past. Lord, I pray that, that powerful scripture verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that you would take that Holy Spirit, write it on their heart, make it the reality of their lives 
And Lord, I'm praying for breakthrough. I'm praying for freedom. I'm praying that you would set people free today and break that bondage that the past has over them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. May you be so blessed as today you've received God's word into your heart. Well, that's just about all we have time for today. But before we go, I know that when we get the word of God into our hearts, it changes how we see ourselves. It changes how we see other people. It changes our relationship with God. The word of God is the power to transform your life. That's why I would love to send you a free copy of our fresh devotional each and every day. A powerful scripture verse together with some words of inspiration, hope and encouragement to help you become all that God made you to be. To request your free copy, either of the e-devotional or the printed devotional, stop by our website. The details are on your screen right now. Or give us a call and we will get that devotional straight out to you. The fresh daily devotional. I'm Bernie Diamond. That's all we have time for today. I'll catch you again same time next week with another message of God's love, God's grace, and God's power for each one of us in Jesus Christ.